Matt, how you doing? Oh, could be better. Okay, what's going on? Um. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's tough. I'm sorry. It's okay. My life is a mess. Oh man. Mm. What happened? Well, I'm trying to get things straightened out, but um, I've been married for twelve and a half years. And, uh, you know, I've been working out of town and stuff, and, uh, you know, we've had communication problems and stuff, and, you know, we've had our issues for a long time, but, you know, I met somebody when I was working out of town and decided that would be the right thing to do, and, uh, you know, I just... How long did you have an, how long did you have an affair with her? Um, like six months. Oh, wow. And how did your wife find out? Uh, she does not know. She doesn't know. No. Um, I um, was moving moving further away for work and just realized, you know, this is this is not where I should be. So, um, are, is your marriage staying together after the affair, or is the affair still going? Um, well, I, I still have talked to her, um, after I met her, I decided I should ask my wife for a divorce, so we're kind of in the middle of that, mm. um, on top of that, I've done the midlife crisis thing, and I have no money, and I have debt up to my years. Wow. Okay, so what's the question for us? I guess I just need to know what's the uh, next right thing to do. Okay. Well. I don't, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually staying at my mom's house right now. Mm. Um, How old are you? 36. 36, okay. Dave, it's an early midlife crisis, yeah. yeah. Hey, Matt, uh, let me give you two things to do uh, to get started. Number one, is that you break off all communication mm. with the affair gal because it's, it, just talking to her keeps it all alive and you're going to go through a withdrawal but mm-hmm. y- if that's if that's going to take place and you're going to have a relationship with her that that will happen anyway but for the next three three to six months I would just say hey, we can't have any contact and then second thing I would do is really slow down the divorce just put it on hold because you're in no shape to make a decision, any of these decisions that are life-changing and, and uh, family-changing and relationship-changing in, in so many ways. This, you know, I, I've got a guy that did this, and he said, I wish there was a, a scared straight movie that yeah. we could show people uh, who are thinking well, about it. Because you know, you're, you're a p- perfect example of the chaos that this creates down and, the road. And what we're hoping is that during this transition phase where you're not talking to the lady and you're slowing down your divorce, you're going to decide the right thing to do is never see her again and go back to that marriage and do what you can do to make it work. But to do that, you've got to do those two things. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to create that, that empty space there because uh, for a while, everything inside of you is going to say, no, i got to keep talking to her, and, and that just keeps everything all chaotic within you emotionally. Yeah. And so you cut that off and then, and then stop See, the divorce and give it three to six months before you make any decision at no all. No situation that you're in right now is permanent. But you make you go for the divorce, you marry the other. Now you got two permanent things. You're still going down the wrong road. So slow it yeah. down. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, that's why I called because I I I didn't I didn't know what to do or okay. where to go from here. Are you bird. are you willing to do this stuff, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to send you uh, walking called, into walls. It's called hitting bottom. Yeah. And God has plans for that, and he knows that we do it sometimes. You've hit bottom. So this is time. The only thing I would add to what the guy said is you need to get community around you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if that's a good church or a pastor or a therapist or something or a coach. 
get community around. You've got some hard decisions to make, and your own sadness and losses will make you make impulsive decisions. Go mm-hmm. back to the woman. Get some people around you who will love you. All right. Okay, I'm really glad you called, Matt. I'll send Walking Into Walls, and it sounds like he's willing to make the change, and uh, Walking Into Walls is a book that um, it's about willingness and what you're not willing to do. If you've got somebody in your family who's not willing, this is a great book to break down that willingness or unwillingness wall.